Hello again. The Ghana Education Service has directed regional and district education directors to ensure head teachers keep schools open after three teacher unions declared an indefinite strike yesterday over their conditions of service. In a statement released by GES, the service urged parents not to panic, assuring them that management is working to resolve the situation. Here are details of that statement. Right, we'll be bringing you details of that statement in a bit. But prior to that statement by the Ghana Education Service, the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission also released its own statement disputing the accusation by the three teacher unions that there has been delay in negotiations of the conditions of service and collective agreement. The commission is expected to meet the unions and other stakeholders today. Here are excerpts of that statement released by the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. Right, we'll bring you more on that particular subject. But you're still watching Join News Desk here on uh, the Join News channel. Let's uh, quickly bring in the public relations officer of the Ministry of Education, Kweku Kwatin. Kweku, uh, good to have you on the show. Uh, you've, I believe you've read excerpts of the statement released by the Fair Wages and then by the Ghana Education Service and by the striking unions. As a ministry, has this issue come to your attention, first of all? All right. Uh, good morning to you, my brother. I'm, uh, I'm just surprised you've forgotten my name. <laughs> my name is Kwesi Kwatin. But anyway, uh, yes, uh, we, we have established contact with Fair Wages and Salaries Commission and even the uh, teacher unions, uh, for that matter, the striking teacher unions. And uh, tentatively, we settled Friday to meet. It is true, apparently, uh, Fair Wages has sent letters of invitation to the teacher unions, but according to them, the understanding is that it's on short notice. So hopefully by Friday, all stakeholders should be uh, uh, ready and, and have all discussions with the hope of resolving this impasse. Right. And I want to find out from you if the ministry sides with the Ghana Education Services a statement instructing district and regional education directorates to keep the schools open despite the teacher unions being on strike. Yes, I mean, the, 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 the schools, even though, I mean, we, we work together with the teachers, the schools uh, obviously are independent institutions. And particularly when even times like this, a lot of them are within the, the, the boarding schools and will still be around. So certainly, they have to be some demonstration of leadership and some management uh, ultimately. It is the, uh, for this reason that we've directed that, of course, through Ghana Education Service, that temporarily there should be some management structures and arrangement within the schools, even ahead of uh, our meetings to, to find lasting resolution to the concerns that has been raised. Right. So, so really, what is the way forward? Is the, uh, is the education ministry going to be present at this particular meeting? And if you are, what is going to be the way forward? Yes, yes, yes. yes. We, are, we are all stakeholders and uh, uh, the teacher unions largely are, are em employees. And of course, the, the strike action affects us directly and our students. And so this time is, is a is a, is a is more of a government affair. And so all parties, including Ministry of Finance, Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, Employment, Education, all of us are going to be present in that meeting. But of course, the, the sole aim is to be able to make sure that we are able to have a very fruitful discussion and get our teachers back to the classroom. Right, uh, Kwesi Kwatin is the Public Relations Officer of the Ministry of education. Uh, now, uh, let's go to another interested party in this, and that is Isaac Barr, who is a, a head of compensation at the Ghana National Association of Teachers. Isaac, welcome to the program. Now, Fair Wages and Salaries Commission says 
There's been no delay in the negotiations of the collective agreement, contrary to what your press release sought to suggest. Is that really the case? And uh, good morning to your viewers, and thanks for having me. Um, let me say that I'll be, I'll be very surprised, very much surprised if Fair Wages tells everybody that they are unaware about this action. Because before we arrive at this decision, as of um, February 29th, we have served a written notice to our employer. We copied the National Labor Commission and Fair Wages as well. So I'll be much surprised if they tell you they are not aware. And I want to find out from you, is it also the case that you reached an agreement with the government on 10 out of your 16 items that were submitted for negotiations during a meeting that was held on the 20th of January this year that was also contained in the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission's press statement? So those 10 items he's talking about, those were existing items already. They were just a procedural item. The most pressing ones are those that we haven't finished and have not touched it. So those are existing ones already. Mm. Mm. And are you going to honor the invitation to come to the, the negotiation table once again? We just received the invitation. I received mine this morning. So leadership will meet and take a decision. And don't forget that we, let, we, uh, we identified five items. Okay. okay. The fair wages one is just one of them. There are four items that we have not heard anything about yet. So it is only one item fair wages is inviting us on. And that is what item? Come again, please. And what item is that? So we said um, some of our teachers as we speak, OSP has placed embargo on their salaries without following any laid down procedures, okay. without giving any reason. And as we speak since January, they have not received their salary. And they don't know why embargo has been placed on their salary. There's another issue about distribution of laptops. Over 63,000 of our members who paid for the procurement of this laptop since 2021 have not received the laptop. Then we have this issue of our scheme of service. You remember very well when the current Director General of GES was appointed, okay. we kicked against the appointment because he was brought from nowhere. Now, GES was established in 1974. As a big institution like GES, they don't have what we call team of service All right. All right. for each employee. So we need one. The case even went to the Labor Commission, and the instruction was for the GES to prepare a collect, um, scheme of service for each worker. As we speak, it hasn't been done. Okay. okay. Right. I want to thank you very much for your time. But let's bring in another interest party. That is NAGRAT. And the vice president of that association, Jacob Anaba, joins me right now for a conversation. Jacob, grateful for your time this morning. The Fair Wages and Salaries Commission said it extended an invitation to you on Tuesday for a meeting scheduled for today to discuss your negotiations, of which there was not any indication from your union that you wouldn't honor such an invitation. So why did you go ahead Strike. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, greetings to your cherished uh, listeners and viewers. Um, unfortunately, I did not receive that invitation. Uh, my boss did, but he indicated that he received the invitation late that evening through uh, social media communication. And already we have <laughs> started our uh, this interest. To, to, to declare the strike. We have written 
to our employer through the Director General, we are reaching to the National Labor Commission and copy the uh, Fair Wages and uh, Salary Commission. So already the edition was in motion to call the strike the next day. And that is what, what happened. Right. right. Now, uh, the Salaries Commission says it sees your industrial action as a show of bad faith. Is that really the case? Because there were negotiations, series of negotiations that were ongoing. So they do not understand why you would go behind them and then back on an industrial action. In fact, it is the uh, Fair Wages and Salary Committee that has really shown bad faith. The point being that since August 2023, our collective agreement uh, document had expired. And we indicated to our employer that we needed to renegotiate. They agreed. We started the meeting till December, where Fair Wages indicated that they had a very important assignment and therefore we couldn't conclude in December. So we extended it in, to January. We held a meeting in Covodra from the 19th to 21st of January. And there was, they did not come with a mandate because we had proposed five new allowances that should be included in the new uh, collective agreement. And they said that no, they had the mandate for only one, which is an existing allowance. That is a continuous professional development allowance. They were ready to increase that. And we said no. The four new ones needed to be part of it. And there was a statement, we, we, we did not continue. So we gave them up to the end of February to have this thing concluded. And they never called us to a meeting. And we wrote to them 29th of February, indicating that if we don't hear anything, they should not blame us for any action that will, will uh, emanate from that. And that is what happened yesterday. Right. So they should be blamed. Mm. I spoke to Nat a while ago. They say they will deliberate on whether to attend that meeting or not. How about Nagrat? Definitely, we are in together. So we are meeting today. Uh, we will meet and then uh, see the way forward. We've seen a letter from the GES. Uh, we will consider all those ones and then see the way forward. So we are having a meeting amongst right, right. ourselves and we'll take the decision from there. Right. Uh, Jacob Anaba is the vice president of the National Association of graduate teachers. I want to thank you very much for your time this morning.